Hello, everybody. My name is Kirill Chukashin. This is my Twitter handle. And today I'm going to talk about algorithm visualizations. Uh, I made a really nice collection and I created, uh, how is it called, Pinterest thing. So basically, it has a lot of different algorithm visualizations like sorting and uh, graph algorithms, but it has also some really like maze generators and other stuff. Uh, today I would like specifically to talk about two algorithms. And it is genetic algorithm and if we have time it will be a path finding algorithm. So let's start with genetic algorithm. And what genetic algorithm does, if you have some really complex task and you have too many variables to create a formula for it, you can just try modifying those variables and seeing if the result is became a little bit better maybe. And let's take a look at an example. <coughs> so here we have an image of Mona Lisa and we're going to use genetic algorithm to build this image out of set of polygons. So let's start with one. So right now we just have one triangle. It's a polygon. We'll have more. Uh, what is it? it is trying to do every step. It tries to modify this triangle a little bit. So it might change the shape. It might change the color. And every time it does it, it calculates the difference between original image and where we are. So the difference is calculated for each pixel. Basically, we just subtract the colors. And let's see how it works. I'm going to get more polygons here. I can start. So right now we see a mess. A lot of triangles are being added here. And basically this is because anything is better than just plain white color. <laughs> but over time we're going to get this picture. Uh, there are several parameters here. So on top you can see fitness function. Uh, can everybody see this? Should I make it a little bit bigger? So basically fitness uh, function is the difference between colors for each pixel. And improvement means that we tried something, we changed one polygon, and the fitness function turned out to be better. And then we keep it, and it goes to the best. Uh, there are different ways of how we mutate the polygons. So right now it says medium, and it means that we're going to take each polygon, and we're just going to change one parameter. So it will be either the shape of the polygon, or it will, it will change the R or G or P in the colors. And if we try heart, for example, it will be changing all possible parameters for the polygon. So for each polygon, it, uh, it will just randomly create a different one and see if it fits better. As you can see now, uh, number of improvements actually is not increasing because the image is pretty fit already and it is pretty hard to get a random polygon which would fit this image better. And there are also soft and Gaussian, Gaussian mutations which are different kinds of medium. And we can play and add more polygons. But you can see how the image gets the shape. I'm going to move this out. If I can. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to move it out. But I'll keep it running. <laughs> and once I switch to another tab, Chrome will make it much slower. So but luckily I have another tab open with the same image. And the good thing you can just upload, like you can go to the CRM and you can upload your photo. Right. Just put it into this field and it will create your photo out of the polygons. The next thing uh, is also a genetic algorithm, but now it's a bit more fun, so refresh. 
So those weird things say uh, cars. <laughs> um, each car has different parameters which are being generated randomly. Each car uh, has different size of a wheel, has a different density of wheels. If, you, if it's darker, it's more dense. If it's lighter, it's less dense. If the car shape is blue, it means it's the car which made it, the, which got the best result during the last try. And also we can see the shadow of the previous best car. So you can see this car was modified a little bit and became better. <laughs> now we can see. <laughs> so over time, uh, we're going to, like I can see there are 20 cars here. And there is this chart. So this chart, chart shows how well the cars are doing. And so far, the best car only went 125 units. And we can see on a small map how they're doing. And over time, they're going to become really fast. They're going to go really far that they sound them. And we have some parameters here. Um, there is mutation rate. It basically means how often we want to change the car. Uh, because like, if the car is very good, we probably don't want to change much of it. And for that, we have second parameter, which is called mutation size. So for example, this car is doing pretty great. And we got this random change, a random chance which said, oh, let's mutate uh, the, the, the shape of the body. Uh, and this second parameter, mutation size, it says how we can mutate it. If it's 100%, we can just pick a really random number and we choose it and the body will be completely different, but the car will keep the same wheels and the same density. And the idea is to adjust parameters to get the best results. <coughs> and I actually have a different tab. Yeah, so this is Mona Lisa image, and it's been running for four hours already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the cooking show equivalent of what just happened. <laughs> I've never seen it before. <laughs> yeah, so or originally it's what we're trying to get, and this is where we got so far. And hopefully over time, like uh, on this website there are, let me see, like some you ran it for seven days. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> With, yeah, Helen Polygons, and this is what they got. Um, yeah, let me show you the cars. It's actually more fun. Uh, yeah. So here you can see how they actually learn how to drive. <laughs> well. <laughs> Let me actually show you the best one that we play. Actually, the more time you spend on it, the better it becomes until some point.
And two more things I'd like to show is pathfinding algorithms. So basically there are different ways to find path from one point to another. This is something which is normally used in games, but we'll also see some real life uh, way to use it as well. So this one is really simple. You can just build a wall. And then you can play with different parameters and see how it's going to find a path from this green dot to this <coughs> uh, There are different algorithms which do this. Like we can try text search, which is actually a graph searching algorithm and it's not optimized for uh, pathfinding. Uh, let's try this. So it just blindly goes everywhere. And now I'm going to show some real life use of this thing. So it's Google Maps. So we can take the same algorithms and we can see how Google Maps use it to find the shortest path. So let's try texture now. And this shows how, how important it is to find the right algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. So if Google Maps would use the extra algorithm, but would spend like hours trying to build the route to like Manhattan from Brooklyn or something. <laughs> and I believe that's it for me. It's a very short presentation. But uh, so I tweeted the link to algorithm validations. There is some other cool stuff like there are robots. Uh, there are like people who are learning how to work with genetic algorithm, and I wasn't patient enough to actually see them working. Uh, but yeah. So take a look. Uh, let me put my Twitter handle on. So genetic, genetic algorithm, uh, actually let me show you. It actually used in multiple places, mostly for machine learning, but there was a really cute example uh, in Wikipedia. Yeah. So NASA actually used it to find the optimal shape for some spacecraft antenna, and this is what it found. Uh, I'm trying to imagine a person trying to come up with a formula to find this. But basically, there are plenty of use cases where it's actually used in the real world. Questions? Yeah. How does the genetic algorithm determine whether it's better from the last one? Uh, so, and the question was how genetic algorithm determines that uh, the result is better than the previous one. Uh, so. For example, with the cars, we can see if it went further than the previous one, it is doing better. Uh, with Mona Lisa, actually I just closed it, I guess. Uh, we just take each pixel and calculate the difference in color between what we have there in original. And we basically just sub subtract the hex numbers, we add them up, all of them, and the smaller this number, the better it is. Does that make sense? I think the short of it is that you're defining the fitness, right? 
And th this is one thing you have to have to use genetic algorithm. You have to understand how to calculate the fitness of the thing. So another question. <coughs> how do you guess the last step? How do, I, how do you guess the next step? You, you uh, so how the question is, how do I guess the next step? The next step is completely random. Okay. So that's the cool thing about genetic algorithm. And uh, there are things like, let's say, uh, say we have just like three polygons. Maybe not the best examples. example. But let's say we have like green polygon in the background and then darker polygon for hair and uh, sunlight polygon for face. That's what we actually would like to have. But imagine we just have some green, three green polygons in that corner to the left. And basically it will match the colors really well. And it will be really hard for it to actually get to other parts of the picture. Because like, oh, I'm in the right place. And if we would have more polygons, it would be great. But if we just have three polygons in the corner, they will never fill the whole image. And this is something we just call the local maximum or local minimum. And this means that genetic algorithm doesn't always get you the perfect solution, but it just gets there as close as, as it can be. And this is why we have different ways to mutate things. So sometimes it's great to just adjust things a little bit here and there, and sometimes you just want to start over for some polygons and just put them in a completely different place. So which is the, uh, the best the best platform for that algorithm? Yes. Uh, well, uh, it's hard to say what is the best. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're doing some very heavy calculations and probably something low level like C++ or something. But like, all the visualizations that I showed you, they were done in JavaScript. Thank you.